Welcome back to NDTV Profit. You're watching Earnings Edge. And we now shift focus to India's sole solar glass manufacturer, and that is Borosol's Renewables. And we're joined by the chairman of the company, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Kheruka. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Kheruka. Um, a weak quarter for the company given multiple headwinds across the board. But how does the company plan to sustain amid a weaker scenario? And what's the outlook for FI25? So we have two things going in our favor. One is that uh, the demand is very strong. Uh, beginning from the 1st of April, uh, the government implemented the ALMM order, finally, which means that uh, only certified modules uh, can be used for government projects. Typically, all these uh, certifications so far have been given only to Indian modules. So this means that uh, production of modules is going to rise dramatically in the course of this year, which means more demand for glass. Of course, they are free to import glass currently without any duty, but at least uh, the market for the company has grown. Secondly, the new Pradhan Mantri Yojana for uh, rooftop solar is also gathering uh, steam and uh, it, it's going to be spread across the country. So I see that a lot of uh, improvement is coming there again, but these modules will also be made in India. And hence there's a bigger demand for our glass, for domestic glass. So one, the demand is robust. Secondly, production is all right. We have a good team. We are producing according to full capacity. So these are two uh, plus points. The third now is a question of price. We have been um, beset by very low prices. This is a Chinese policy of dumping, and that policy is something which uh, is there worldwide. Uh, they, they're trying to remove uh, manufacturers of solar components, solar modules across the world. Uh, but that has, uh, you know, that's their intent, but we have uh, safeguards in place for solar modules. So far as solar glass is concerned, at the moment there is no duty, but prices of rate have gone up. Uh, in the last uh, few weeks. And now uh, the, the latest I've heard is that a container that was $700 is now $3,500. So that increases the cost of freight and uh, thereby the cost of glass goes up and that gives us some respite. We might be able to get a better you know, sales realization coming out uh, from, this, uh, uh, from this situation. And uh, th that is really the principal thing that's uh, going against us. Go got it, Mr. Hiroka. Yes. Um, you know, it's funny you mentioned demand and realizations because that's, that those were my next questions. Now, you mentioned the ALMM list. Now, but there's no specific mention for solar glass per se. Now, obviously, the demand will rise. But has the company been seeing uh, more orders on the back of these two um, government policies? Yes. We, we are selling all that we produce. So okay. we we basically have to sort of take a call on which order we're going to which order we're going to accept. So so there's no problem in selling um, the, the 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 production that we have. It's only a question of price, and uh, we we see that uh, prices are okay because of this. What I just said. Number two, something very important. I've been meeting government officers in different ministries uh, over the last year uh, discussing this issue. And I've been assured that uh, with effect from 1st October, this uh, uh, the exemption from levy of duty is going to be withdrawn. So coming uh, from the 1st of September, hopefully, 15% duty uh, ought to become applicable on the imports of glass. In the past, we were the only producers. Now there are five other producers. And uh, uh, the, the total production of solar glass in the country today is 2,300 tons per day, which is which is very impressive. Uh, we are doing 1,000 out of these 2,300. There are uh, four other people who are doing 3,000, uh, 1,300 tons a day. So it's no longer uh, an industry driven by a single player, and therefore we have greater traction. Uh, with, with the government. Got it. So from the second half of this financial year, the company will, um, you know, see higher demand and uh, favorable government policies. Uh, do, does our current production capacity, is it sufficient for the demand that would see a rise going forward? I think uh, it, it would not be sufficient. We'd have to grow. So we are uh, ready for growth in the sense uh, 
Uh, we have a batch house which is ready for 1000 tons already and we have the electrical installation which is ready so uh, when the uh, when uh, when it's time to set up a new line our capital cost will be uh, much less compared to other people I and won't. so we, we have a i think that, that would give us a good competitive edge but of course we are waiting for the financials to become robust once again Got it, Mr. Keroka. And what about the fourth furnace uh, capacity addition plan? Will the company be going forward with it this year or could that come in in the next two, three years? I, I don't think it will be in this financial year. Frankly speaking, we need to uh, get back on our feet. Uh, we, we've suffered in the last year approximately, you know, so it would be nice to recover some of the money lost yes. and have some healthy reserves and then we can go ahead. And what's the outlook on the export and the European market, you know, with the US um, duties on um, China uh, products and even the Euro European market kind of following the same path. Could we see an uptick in um, the export market as well? Because that is 20 to 25 percent of your revenues, if I'm not wrong. Yes, ma'am, you're absolutely right. So we are exporting some 20 percent of our production. And uh, there is currently a problem in the European market because of Chinese dumping and the Europeans have only, I think two days ago, announced that they are coming out with firm policies on what they call net zero. So that means that a certain percentage of all solar power that is installed in Europe must come from goods that have been manufactured in Europe. And so therefore, uh, when that comes, we are the only uh, supplier of solar glass to Europe currently. And uh, therefore, we we we're looking at good demand there as well. Plus, there has been uh, the uh, the startup of some good export demand for our German company, which is very reassuring. And uh, we hope that uh, things will uh, change there as well. So in Germany also, we've invested a, a, a lot of money. We have uh, completely refurbished the glass processing lines to make it very economic and uh, high speed and very good quality. So. Uh, that that will be useful in reducing cost of production over there. So, Mr. Keroka, you know, with the you know the demand tailwinds kind of forming its way, um, what is the kind of sales volume uptick that you expect? What was it in FI24, and what kind of growth does the company expect for FI25? The the sales that we had in the last year was just short of a thousand crores in, in, in for the Indian uh, operation, and. Uh, you know, I just don't ever give any kind of number which is forward looking. So I will not give you any kind of number for the for the future in terms of uh, hard numbers. But yes, if the prices go up, then obviously the turnover goes up as well. And um, uh, there, there's a certain amount of value addition in the products that we are selling now, uh, which which gives a slightly higher price than normal products. So hopefully that's also going to contribute to the top line. So the bottom line. Got it. And you know, um, uh, your the company is going to go ahead with a fundraise and in the form of a rights issue. Uh, could you maybe yeah. give us some information about that? And also, even after the fundraise, because this will be used for debt repayments, could we still expect higher debt going forward? Uh, that's something that it would be premature to speak about right now. We would like to use the money to to uh, to get relief from debt and reduce debt. Uh, so whether we'll take debt again in the future is a, is an important question. I think uh, th that we'll have to wait until we see, uh, you know, stuff unfolding. We, we need to see our expectations being met before we are going for any further expansion. Got it, Mr. Kiroka. And, you know, okay, uh, the demand tailwinds are forming ways, but however, the, you know, our top line could be impacted by the lower lower prices in the next few months. So from the cost efficiency side of things, which is where the company has space for improvement because, you know, you can't control the uh, prices in the market, what is the target and what is the company doing to do, uh, to, you know, get those efficiencies in place? We are working very hard, both in Germany and in India, in uh, identifying uh, places where costs can be reduced or cost per unit can be reduced. And uh, uh, we, we have identified many places. We are working on that and uh, some, some success has already been achieved. We've been able to uh, pare down unnecessary costs and improve efficiencies. And uh, just uh, if you look at something like packing, now in the past we used to use uh, pine timber to pack the 
uh, glass and send it to different customers and we never got the, the crates back. Now we've started uh, bringing back the crates and reusing them. We've shifted to steel crates, which we bring back and we reuse. So for all the places which are nearby and which can afford it, we prefer to bring back the packing. Yes. So things like that, which at one stroke is already giving you uh, a decent saving. Yes. Then also question of multimodal transport. We use ocean freight for shipments within India. And uh, we use uh, uh, rail and road uh, combined. So we, we bring containers by road to the nearest container yard in Ankleshwar. And from there, it travels to the customer's point where it gets offloaded and goes again. So all of this uh, works uh, very well in reducing costs. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Kheroka. And, you know, we're all uh, wrapped up on time today, but it was lovely talking to you and we wish you all the best. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, well, that was Borussia Renewables for you and kind of giving you on how demand tailments are forming for the company. But that's all we have for the show for, uh, for today. But do stay tuned to NDTV Profit.